What's the difference between an objective or a benchmark when you're writing IEPs? Well, there's sort of an art and a science to answering that question. And whenever I think about things related to individualized education plans, I start with the federal law in the United States, which is the Individuals with Disabilities Education Improvement Act of 2004. And since July 1st of 2005, with its reauthorization, which was at the time of this recording, the last time it has been reauthorized, we were no longer required to write objectives and benchmarks, except for, for students students who are on alternative assessments and adhering to alternative standards. The intent was to reduce the paperwork burden on teams writing IEPs, but the requirement to still address the individualized needs of every student and to be able to report progress to families so that we could understand and change the uh, educational plan as needed was still intact. So where did that leave us? So we often still write goals and objectives or goals and benchmarks. So what's the difference between a goal with a benchmark and a goal with an objective? So again, you can turn to federal law, but you won't find much information. Again, the spirit, the intent of federal law is to guide practices that adhere to certain core principles about being individualized, the least restrictive environment, being able to report progress back to families, to be held accountable and so forth and so on. You might then look to the research. You might then look to even experts in the field. So let's come back to what's the difference between an objective and a benchmark. Well, there's really not a lot of consensus. And even in federal law, it sometimes uses one word, benchmark, or sometimes it'll use or, meaning benchmark or objectives, and then sometimes it uses them interchangeably. The whole intent or the spirit, again, is to be able to serve as a pit stop. So some people use the analogy of you're going on a trip and you need to look on your map and check every once in a while where you are. How far have you gotten to your destination? There's all kinds of analogies that people will use. So the analogy that I learned many, many, probably decades ago, was that a benchmark is like a staircase and objectives are like pieces of a puzzle. Okay, let's think about that. And let's break each of them down. Regardless, what we want is to be able to measure progress over time. But the idea is that annual goals all by themselves are measurable so that we can determine at any point how close are we to that destination. Do we still have fuel in the tank? And then we can adjust accordingly, even though our day-to-day -day practice is we don't tend to change IEPs, but annually, though we should, and or we might write too many specific things on the IEP, which then sort of predicts or tries to predict how a child will learn or how quickly they will learn. And then that sort of can stall or um, impact instruction in ways that we didn't intend. So let's go back to the staircase and let's go back to the pieces of the puzzle. And then let's think about how they serve the annual goal. So that annual goal, which by itself must be meaningful or what we often say is functional and measurable, then the way that we've often done that is by writing things that come underneath it. So one of the key problems with writing benchmarks that are time stamped is that we're trying to predict human development. And the problem with that is we can't. So what often happens is we have a team of folks who see a student at a point in time, uh, maybe the evaluation team, maybe the eligibility team, and they try to write an IEP goal for a year's time into the future. They're not going to know very much about the child. They haven't spent very much time. And often that evalu evaluation or eligibility process doesn't produce authentic assessment. It's not accurate. It's not valid or reliable or related to the student. But we want to think about, can I really predict by when a student will make a certain amount of progress or learn a certain number of skills? Well, if the student is older, that is problematic because development actually becomes more variable the older we are. So if a child is an infant or a toddler, you might be able to do a better job predicting when they'll hit certain milestones. But the older a student is, three, four, certainly 13, 
the more variable development is and learning, meaning the rate at which people learn, when they'll learn milestones, the order in which they learn them, how our culture and the world's events start to impact us. So they become problematic to write benchmarks in a time-stamped kind of way. But we like that idea of major milestones, so we'll come back to that when we think about the staircase. Objectives, on the other hand, are sometimes thought of as pieces and parts of the goal, so that if the goal has several components, we can break each of those components into a separate part and therefore measure progress toward the whole by way of the parts. That's a little bit easier because we're not predicting the order or the sequence. However, it's also problematic because we may not have an annual goal that actually has breakable pieces and parts. So we start to do things like the level of assistance that the student's going to require, or we start to try to find ways to break something big into smaller parts that then starts to lose its meaning and its functionality and its relevance. Okay. So let's go back to the staircase and the puzzle. If we're writing benchmarks for a student who is Really, um, let's just say that they are thinking about developmental milestones. Like what I mean by that is first, second, third. Like pedagogically speaking or developmentally speaking, we know that there are certain steps that you have to go through to get to the top of the staircase. It doesn't mean every student will go in the same order or that some students won't jump over or go back down the staircase, but generally speaking, in human development and learning, what we know about a particular reading construct or what we know about a particular motor skill is that these are the steps. This is earlier or easier. This is simple. This is complex. Okay. So that makes sense to write benchmarks because we can use known sequences and do our best to apply that to a particular student, knowing that we may have to adapt that given their neurodiversity, given their life situations. So the benchmarks are like a staircase. Let's say you have four steps to get to the top of the, top of the staircase. Each benchmark is an individual skill or a separate step towards the annual goal. So something like learning to walk. You can say the student is able to pull to a stand, they are crews, they walk with support, they walk or run unsupported. You can see those as developmental milestones. And you can do that again with reading, with math, with communication, when there is a milestone or a major skill section that you can sort of depict into a hierarchy. The downside of benchmarks is we can sometimes get stuck on aiming for the goal or allowing the child to perform the goal without going through the milestones. So sometimes we get stuck on earlier or prerequisite skills and we just stay there and we keep working on it, working on it, thinking that that is the only way to get to the goal. When sometimes you can take the elevator and get straight there. And sometimes people will bypass steps and never need them. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag and the team has to be really paying attention to their authentic assessment information and their knowledge of development and learning. So let's talk about objectives. When you think about objectives, we're really talking about pieces of the puzzle or components of the part. So this is where there isn't a logical, pedagogical, or developmental sequence that comes to mind, but the end result, the end skill, the destination has many pieces and parts to it. And these are a lot of skills that we gain as we get older. We don't sort of go milestone by milestone after about age three, we start putting pieces of skills together to make them more complex. So let's think about cooperative play. Cooperative play takes many different skills where I can take on roles and identities, I can resolve conflicts, I can share and exchange objects. So there's multiple skills, not one or the other is necessarily easier or harder. Now they may be easier or harder because of what I've been exposed to, what, how my disability impacts my functioning, my preferences, my neurological 
uh, wiring, all of those things. But on the face of it, they are all sort of equal. They are all necessary components or parts of the whole. So just when you think of a puzzle and you go, oh, I need all the puzzle pieces in order to make it complete. Now, people have preferences. Do I start with the border? Do I start with the hard part? Do I start with the easy part? Some people just have a random approach. Again, the sequence doesn't matter on how you put the puzzle together, but you need all the pieces to say you have a complete puzzle. So same thing with goals and objectives. It doesn't really matter the order. You can teach them simultaneously. You can teach them as they emerge in the activity or lesson, but you need to teach all of the objectives in order to reach the annual goal, which would be all the pieces put together, okay? Long story short, we don't actually need to write goals with objectives or benchmarks unless the student is on alternative assessment adhering to alternative standards. That said, most all IEP forms and or IEP computerized systems or IEP teams will still write goals with objectives and benchmarks. Then you can write a benchmark that is more of a milestone or a sequence. Oftentimes we use that with timestamps, which can be problematic for a variety of reasons, but you could say by a certain date, this will be accomplished. By a certain date, this will be accomplished on our way towards the top of the staircase or the annual goal, which is a separate skill or the top of the stairs. You could also write them in developmental, pedagogical, or logical sequences. But how you write the benchmark, how you write the objective is exactly the same, meaning we still have an antecedent, we still have an observable behavior, and we still have criteria that allows us to measure the progress towards the benchmark, towards the objective, and ultimately towards the goal. So no longer can the goal be always measurable by way of its benchmarks or objective. And if you have more questions than you started with and want to know how do I make sure that my annual goals are meaningful, measurable, functional, how do I write antecedents behavior criteria, check out the description. I'll put lots of links to, again, federal law, research, experts, and then examples of goals, objectives, and benchmarks. And then for sure, be sure to subscribe because we're always providing really practical tips, ideas, and strategies to create more inclusive classrooms, including more inclusive IEPs.